see who jumps on. Waiting for some people to come on. If they come on, it's Friday night. People might be out at happy hour. Let's see if I get anybody. Okay, I got two people. Let me know who's there, you guys, so I can acknowledge you. Who's on? I see two people on. So let me know who you are. You gotta call me back about um, bodyguard and let me know what's going on with that. So those that came in on time, I'm gonna go ahead and um, get started. So this Facebook Live is basically talking about uh, uterine fibroids and uh, my journey with uterine fibroids that I'm still on now because I still have them. And um, I'm gonna have to, I shouldn't say have to, but I feel like I should um, have what is called a uterine fibroid embolization. So um, a little history about um, me and having fibroids. I was diagnosed with them in 2007 or thereabouts. Um, I also have not only uterine fibroids, but I have endometriosis. So what uh, uterine fibroids are are i'm going to read you the definition of fibroids so fibroids are non-cancerous growths of the body of the uterus and endometriosis is tissue that you would normally have lining the inside of your uterus you have on the outside and the symptoms of both of these things are pelvic pain uh, very heavy periods in my case to the point where I was clotting and I'm going through super plus tampons like every 20 minutes. So imagine you can't sleep through the entire night. You can't um, really go to work and not worry about messing up your clothes or being in the bathroom the entire time. So uh, the fix at that time for the endometriosis was to have a DNC um, and the only way you can find out if you have endometriosis is if you have um, laparoscopic uh, procedure so they make a small incision usually above the navel they go in with a uh, scope and a camera and what it looks like when you see the pictures afterward are these little red lesions all along the outside of your uterus and what happens with that excess tissue it causes um, pain, the excess bleeding. It can also cause painful sex. Um, and your menstrual blood can get trapped in that tissue. And that tissue can just release whenever uh, the, that blood that is trapped in there. So you can have your cycle, think you're done, and then, you know, the next week or so, you're having the, the spotting. And that's usually what, what is, it's from. It's from that endometriosis tissue releasing um, that, that trapped uh, blood. So I was put on a drug called Lupron. And this is the little pamphlet you get. It's probably going to come out backwards. Yep. And it's called Lupron Depot. And Lupron is spelled L-U-P-R-O-N Depot D-O-P-T. And it's a series of three shots. So after I had the uh, laparoscopic uh, procedure done to find out if I had endometriosis, the treatment for it was this Lupron. And it's in a shot form. Um, it has various side effects. It causes you to go into a menopausal kind of state. Um, you have... Uh, high flashes, it can uh, cause vaginal dryness, it can cause moodiness, uh, it can lower your sex drive, and it can cause thinning bones. So 
all the stuff that you, <laughs> of course, do not want, but you want the pain and the bleeding to go away. So, hey, Em. So, um, I had two of the three series of this Lupron shot. I could not take a third one. First of all, the first one that I received, I thought I was going to receive in the doctor's office at my post uh, procedure appointment. And they actually shot me up with it right out of the surgery. So I didn't even know it was in my system. So I went to my post-op appointment. I was told, oh, this is the second shot that you're getting. I'm like, what? I didn't know I had the first one. So I went through the hot flashes, um, had the moodiness, and this stuff was in my system before I even read about the uh, side effects. So once I read about it, and I'm feeling like, you know, I'm a 65-year-old woman, I said, I'm not taking it anymore. Um, so I declined the third, uh, shot. So, um, after that happened, I felt better for a little while, but I was told that fibroids are not only genetic and, uh, mostly women of color are stricken with fibroids, African American women, Asian women, Indian women, no one knows why. That is, uh, my mother had fibroids, she had a hysterectomy. My aunt had fibroids, she had a hysterectomy. Back in their time, that was really the only solution. Fibroids are non-cancerous, so you don't really have to um, do anything, but they cause such um, symptom symptomatic problems like bloating and pelvic pain and things like that. You do want to get rid of them. So, yeah, you don't want it. So, <laughs> if you haven't had them by now, Em, you probably won't get them. Thank God. Um, because I've had them since I was in my, like, early 30s. I, well, I was diagnosed with them then. So, I, I may have had them even earlier. I don't even know. But, um, so, after the Lupron and trying to deal with the endometriosis piece of it, I said, well, I'm going to detox my body. Because supposedly fibroids are a hormonal imbalance. I mean, you have too many hormones. Your um, uterus is producing too much estrogen. So I said, okay, well, I have been on the pill for years. And I was like, okay, well, let me get off the pill. Because you're introducing more hormones into your body. So got off the pill. I did this big detox, like this 30-day detox. Shout out to my herbalist, um, Russell Herbal Company. Uh, his herbs are excellent. And I felt a hundred times better, but really all that did was um, temporarily make me feel like the fibroids were kind of, you know, not causing any problems. The fibroids didn't go away or dissolve or any of that. Um, but I felt better because I had gotten all of these old toxins and old waste out of your body. Whenever you do a cleanse and you do it uh, properly and you follow the strict guidelines of the cleanse, you're going to feel better. Just, you know, off top with that. But that does not have anything to do with the fibroid piece of it. The fibroids are still there. So as time went on after I did the detox, here come the symptoms again of the fibroids with the heavy bleeding, the cramping that just stops you in your tracks and you cannot move. You're just kind of like frozen. You're in such pain. So went back to the doctor. First thing I wanted to do was we got to stop this bleeding. You're just, you're bleeding too much. I can't believe you're, um, you're walking around. So uh, my eyes were peaking. Um, M knows I'd be falling asleep at, at meetings at work <laughs> you know, because I was, I had no, energy my blood was literally just leaving my body so um the physician at that time which was just primary care physician wanted to put me back on birth control i was like no that's i think part of the problem um so i don't want to get back on birth control because you're only dealing with one piece of it so she sent me to a doctor who does the um uterine fibroid embolization uh, procedure but before you get 
that procedure, you have to have an extensive um, ultrasound with basically like an MRI almost of your uh, uterus. So they put dye in and all this kind of stuff and they want basically to see where the location of your fibroids are. Yes, they're in your uterus, but you could also have some that are embedded in your uterine wall or in certain cavities. So the the uh, embolization process is not going to capture those that are kind of embedded and hidden and, and things like that. So they want to see where they are. Plus, they don't want to have you having fibroids near any vital organs and things like that. So in my case, I had three that were, I think it was three, embedded in my uterine lining. So I had to get those removed. And luckily, I didn't have to be cut open for them to be removed. They were removed vaginally, but that was the OBGYN that did that. So after that was done, it was like, okay, well, what are you going to do about these other ones? Because I have, like, I went back over my medical records today. I had, in 2007, I had, like, 12 or more of them. But they were, you know, kind of small, like one centimeter, two centimeter, that kind of thing. So... After I got the, the three removed um, that were embedded, I said, well, why can't I just wait and see if I feel better before I get this other procedure? Because embolization only deals with the fibroids you have. It does not prevent you from getting any more. So I, my concern was, was I don't want to go through this. And then some years later, I got to do it again. So I said, let me just see what happens. I started going to uh, acupuncture and, you know, try to get your blood circulating. And that did help. It helped the blood flow. I didn't have that heavy um, cycle. Uh, I got to the point where I wasn't even having cramps anymore. And I've always had cramps. Always had to take Advil, Pamperin, Midol, something. Um, but that had subsided as well. So, hey, Anthony. So, um... After, you know, doing the acupuncture, after having that, it's called a uh, hysteroscopy to get those embedded fibroids out. I was feeling better. So, moving on with life, and here we are, 2016, and uh, now they've grown. So, I went from having like a 5 centimeter fibroid growing to an 8 centimeter. I've had a um, three centimeter grow to a six centimeter. So that's what I have now. I still have all these fibroids and a lot of them have gotten bigger. And of course, that makes your stomach um, bloat. So you have the bloat from the fibroids and you have the bloat from uh, your cycle because you're bloated on your cycle anyway and then you got all these fibroids going on as well so I was told when I first had the um, hysteroscopy well you can monitor them and see if they're growing um, if they're growing then you may want to deal with it so now they're growing and I find myself I'm bloated all the time um, when I'm on my cycle of course there's more bloat and I'm thinking because I don't have the heavy um, flow and I don't have as much pain as I did, I didn't really equate it to the fibroids being an issue. I thought I had some kind of digestive issue. I'm thinking because I don't go to the bathroom like I should. I don't drink enough water. I never have. Um, so I'm like, okay, let me do the 10-day green smoothie cleanse <laughs> like everybody else on Facebook. You know, so I did that. And my stomach went down, but it went came right back up because the fibroids are still there. Um, I did, you know, let me not drink any coffee. And I have been drinking decaf for years because I have been told that caffeine increases uh, the size of the fibroids. Well, that's not necessarily true. Um, so just all this stuff that we try to grab at to figure out... Um, what is going on? You're on day five of what, Am You're not drinking coffee? <laughs> Are you day five of green smoothie cleanse? Which one? But 
I mean, I did the green smoothie cleanse and I did, um, a t of course, a 10 day and I had the one meal and make sure you food combine. Yeah. So, yeah, do your food combine and do the one meal. If you try to starve and <laughs> do three smoothies and them little snacks, ciao. But, um, you know, all those uh, detoxes and smoothie cleanses and stuff like that, you do feel better. You do see results, but if you have something like uterine fibroids, the um, euphoria that you have or that, you know, good feeling you have is only going to last for so long um, because you have a separate issue. So um, now I'm at the point where I'm going to go back to the physician um, who pre uh, performs the uterine fibroid embolization and see uh, if she still thinks I'm a good candidate for it and, and go ahead and have it done. And what embolization is, for those that don't know, is basically they are uh, giving you a little small, minimally invasive little cut in your groin area and they go in with a tube and in the tube they inject uh, these little small plastic, for lack of a better word, particles. And those particles travel into the arteries that are feeding the fibroids. The fibroids are being fed by your blood. So they have their own um, arteries that are going into them. And once those arteries are plugged up, then the fibroids die off. So I've heard um, from people that I know personally who have had it done that it's like instant relief. Uh, you do have to stay in the hospital overnight. So, uh, you know, you hear these commercials about the fibroid treatment collective on KJLH out here in L.A. And they're, oh, it's no, it's non-surgical. If I have to be under anesthesia and you cutting anything and I'm in the hospital overnight, uh, that's surgery. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you know, it might be minimally invasive, but you still have to be put under and, you know, go through all of that. So, um. But that's what we're going to try now. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. When I had the hysteroscopy, people assumed that I had embolization. I did not. All I dealt with was those embedded fibroids because embolization will not do anything for um, anything that is within the wall or uh, inside a cavity. So that is what I had, hysteroscopy. I have not had the embolization. <clears throat> that will be the next go round. And I have been asked if I was expecting, which is rude. <laughs> um, my OB, uh, when I told him that, he said, well, your fibroids are like the size of a woman who would be 27 weeks pregnant. And even though... I'm not, you know, sticking out that far because I have so, some muscle tone. Thank God I just didn't stop working out. Um, but they're clearly there. He could even feel them just by, you know, doing a um, just a touch exam. And, of course, I had the ultrasound and, and all of that, and he measured them. So an 8-centimeter fibroid is like the size of a baseball. 5 centimeters is like the size of a lime. So I have... Uh, multiple uh, fibroids going on that hopefully the embolization will shrink, die off. My stomach will be back flat again and people won't be asking me, am I pregnant? So um, I was told too, I should just have a fake baby shower and get cash gifts. So anybody thinks I'm pregnant, I'm gonna have a baby shower. And then I'm going to use all your money and uh, go to Jimmy Choo and give me some shoes. Uh, I need some new furniture, a uh, new TV. So, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll do that. Hey, Stephanie, where have you been? I haven't seen you in forever. So, um, any questions for me? I will keep you informed because this is still, uh, this process is still ongoing, I should say. I'm not done um i bought clothes oh you have fibroids what'd you do to them did you leave them alone or did you have a procedure 
because I bought clothes within this year that like pants that I can they're just too uncomfortable they're tied up on my stomach I'm, I'm buttoning my pants and digging in my skin you know and I'm buying my true size it you know fit properly everywhere else but right in that front I can't I can't do it so they they have got to go but Stephanie, what did what process or procedure did you have to deal with your um, fibroids? You had which one? Which procedure did you have? Hey, Sean. Yes, girl, pray for me. I hope it's just one procedure. <laughs> I hope this is the last one that I have to do. I've been taking herbs, 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 and. Um, you know, that is just a temporary, um, it's really not even a fix. It just makes you feel better for a short period of time. But, you know, if you don't deal with the actual um, growths, then you, you're going to constantly have issues. Oh, you had a hysterectomy. Yeah, my mom had a hysterectomy. Um, and that was, you know, the common thing. I actually have um, one of my line sisters, my sores. She is younger than I am. And she's had a hysterectomy as well. She says she regrets it now um, because she's had some not really difficulties after. Um, yeah, I feel you. I was too. Bleeding really, really, really bad. Um, and with me living by myself, I, you know, my fear was I'd be passed out on the floor somewhere and nobody would know, you know, what happened. That's why I always tell my coworkers, if I don't come to work, and I have not called in, then you need to call the police because I'm over here um, passed out or something. Hey, Sean, what's going on? The bruh's in the building. But, um, but yeah, hysterectomies are, were very common uh, in, in those days or partial hysterectomies. So, you know, that was, that was just kind of what they did. If you had anything that was, you know, painful, heavy bleeding, stuff like that. Yeah, girl, I'm still working. <laughs> it ain't that bad. <laughs> um, I don't know if you heard the first part. Uh, when it was really bad, um, I had uh, three of my fibroids removed because they were really causing a lot of pressure. They were in the um, uterine lining. Oh, they were like, girl. Oh. Okay, I hope your mom does is doing better. Hey, Joella. What is going on? But yeah, I mean, you know, for, for the guys, if you have someone in your life, whether it's your, your wife, girlfriend, sister, mom, you know, you need to know that this is, like, real. <laughs> you know, this is real. And some women don't even know they have them. Um, they just think they have heavy periods. And then as time progresses they get worse and worse and worse and worse i have one friend who did have the embolization and told me i should have done it a long time ago um she was bleeding to the point where she had to be hospitalized and she had no idea um that she had fibroids because she had never um had them checked she just thought she had bad periods and, you know, she had to wind up getting blood transfusions. So if you are having, you know, your cycles where you're, you're changing um, sanitary napkins or um, tampons every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes, you need to go to your um, gynecologist or get one, you know, get a referral for one from, you know, someone you trust and have them give you a, a pelvic exam or um you know the ultrasound is is better so and then you know go from there and see what you want to do but eastern medicine is great i do go to acupuncture still uh, to keep you know everything kind of circulating as it should and i think that has helped um with the flow and the the pain so i'm uh, definitely all for Eastern medicine, but when you're dealing with something like this, and this as long as I've had them since 2007, 
you know, there, there are other things that I'm, I'm going to have to do at this point. So, but if anyone has any questions, let me know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, mine started off small, but now they're big. <laughs> now they're big. So. Mine were, I think, one centimeter when I first um, got the diagnosis. And now I have one that's eight centimeters. But that's over the course of eight years. So. And at one point, I was told they were shrinking, which was maybe two years ago. So I don't know how that happened. But it is what it is. So, but keep me in your prayers. I am going to um, have the next appointment once this HMO referral is approved. And I'll go to the embolization um, doctor. And, you know, keep it pushing. Hey, Chris. So. Yes, keep me in your prayers, girl. Keep me in your prayers. And I am not having no baby. Hey, Paige. Oh, my God. What's going on? So, you guys have any questions for me, let me know. I'm here to answer whatever. I'm trying to think. Did I cover everything? I think so. As far as this video goes, you know, I'll let you know what happens um, when I have this uh, embolization because I'm pretty sure I'm a candidate for it. So, but that's it. Uh, watch the replay, leave your comments. Uh, if you have any uh, tips for me or anyone you know that has gone through the uterine uh, fibroid embolization treatment, let me know let me know what they thought of it if you know they had any issues or you know whatever their uh, testimonials are and you guys have a great safe weekend all right peace out